Yeah, I was about to say, Brody, you're only 25 years old. so I, Yeah, but I read at a 28-year-old level. Oh, that's very impressive. You must be very proud. Welcome back to Off the Bench. T-Bob Bear, Brody Miller hanging out with you today as Jordy Collada is out. Him and his father and his son are all going to the Astros playoff game. Uh, Hunt, what's going on, man? Are you locked into these MLB playoffs? I'm very sad about the MLB playoffs, and I'd prefer that we not talk about them. What about, the, what about your boys firing Madden, dude? How are you feeling? I knew that was going to happen. I told you that was going to happen last week. Yeah. but you know, Are you up saying? Are you, no, you I think it was it? time. I, they said it was like a country club in there. Like nobody was, there's nobody being held accountable. Nobody getting in anybody's face. They were just kind of going about their merry way, and it didn't work. They lost the wild card game last year, and they didn't make the playoffs this year. They got a good team. So Who do you it, want? It, it's not, well, I think they're going to hire David Ross, which is kind of weird, but it worked for the Yankees. So, um, I, no one wants to talk about this, but it's it makes me sad. We need more Midwest baseball talk here. That's what hey, the show's look, about. Man, uh, look, like, so being a major league baseball team, like a baseball fan is it's like I talk all the Cubs my roommate the whole time because they're it's every day. <laughs> like you you're with them every single you day. Put and then some when effort it's, into then that when that it's gone, it's it's over. It's like football's great. And LSU's playing great and that's awesome. The Saints are doing well and, but that's they, they play once a week. Oh, wow. So I thought you were saying it was every day like that's a lot of effort. You're saying it's every day like you're going to miss them. Like you, oh, you, it's you, awful. You I miss hate, your, your I nightly the, partner. Yeah, I hate when the Cubs season ends. It's the uh, worst. Well, thoughts and prayers to oh, you I appreciate and that. all Cubs fans out there. Um, let's talk about this Utah State game. So y'all are going to be on bright and early. Yes. Uh, I think we're passing off to y'all at 9 a.m. That's correct. If you want to listen to Hunt Palmer, Marlon Favorite, and Brandon Taylor, all three of whom are excellent on the pregame show on Eagle 98.1. Uh, let's start with Jordan Love because mm-hmm. we didn't talk about him segment one, and he is the you know I mean obviously like what's what's the the stock lines on Utah State? They won ten games last year, and they yep. got a really good quarterback. Uh, how much success do y'all think Jordan Love is going to have Saturday? I think you'll have some. Unfortunately, I you know I just I don't totally believe in this defense yet until they prove it. And I think we talked about it last week, but it's it's a a whole like list of things that aren't right with this team. It's from you know busted assignments to injuries to adjusting to the fast-paced offense. That there's a lot of things that aren't great, and some of it's correctable, and some of it we'll see if they can do it or not. But you know, Love's pretty good. I mean, he threw he had great numbers in the first game against Wake, but he threw three picks. They only scored one offensive touchdown against San Diego State. They had you know a, a kick return touchdown, I think, and a pick six. They had a, they also had a, a scoop and score in a, in a game they played earlier. So. Some of their scoring numbers are a little off because of those, but he's he's good and he's going to throw it a lot. So they need. We'll see how this adjusted secondary looks. So so you you mentioned the the three picks and Brody. I want your opinion on this as well. Um, when, when you see a six to five ratio, because that's where he's at right okay. now, six touchdowns and five interceptions. Uh, that feels like a guy who's going to be very turnover prone, and and that would be great for LSU. I'd love to see them build off of the two picks that they had against Vandy. But when three come in one game, like, is this guy turnover prone or was that just a bad day? I mean, when you look at, like, Wake Forest, for example, when he threw three, I mean, that's a Wake Forest defense that's not very good. I mean, mm. I, I didn't watch that game closely. I'm not going to pretend I know more than I do. But that's, I mean, that is sports talk radio. You should absolutely <laughs> pretend that I'm you sorry, know more than you but, do. I mean, maybe that's part of it, you know, how it was the first game with this offense going even faster than they did last year. Maybe that factors in and whatnot. I don't, I don't know. But the, the five interceptions he's thrown were all against pretty st- – over like sub- objectively bad defenses, yeah. but what's interesting is he didn't throw any against San Diego State, which is actually one of the top twenty defenses in the country. So I don't know what to necessarily make of that, but I mean it's not a very good rushing game. So I think if you can take that away, you can maybe to some extent control Jordan Love. Here's a Jordan Love question, um, because he is a top NFL prospect, right? Like he is viewed as one of the top five quarterbacks in a lot of uh, scouting boards. Does he stand? Th- does he have more to gain or more to lose on Saturday? I think more to gain. I think they'll look at it and go, look, you know, if Carson Wentz would have come down here, LSU would have eaten him alive. It's yeah. just that you, his team's not good. So everyone knows that. But if he lights it up, that that's against two guys that might go in the first round of the draft in the secondary, that's a big deal. So I, I think that he's got, got far more to gain than he does to lose. So one thing that, and we're talking to Hunt Palmer, catch him on Eagle 98-1 game day tomorrow, uh, starting bright and early at 9 a.m., um, one thing ab- about this, this this LSU offense that we want to see improvement is is the run game, and we talked about it. Hunt, uh, Leonard Fournette leaving, the two freshmen back stepping in, Ed Ingram returning. It looks like that rushing game could get a lot stronger. Um, what do you, what do y'all think about the, the the freshman running backs' roles? I mean, Coach O saying that what now they're they're basically splitting the two reps between Emory and Davis Price. Yeah, last dress rehearsal for them. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. Good. That's a you, great yeah. way. You, that is a great you, way. But it's actually a great way of this entire game. Right. Yeah. This is the last dress rehearsal before you get to the real schedule. Got to go. And those guys are going to play, but they've they've got to prove they can do it. And like O said it, like he's so transparent in press conferences. Yes. Which I, I love, love yes. dude. It is. And he said, like, we throw it so well, it's hard to call a run play. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that's the case. Like, they complete 80% of their throws. Uh, so... Uh, I, I I don't expect them to make some like super concerted effort to just pound the football in the first quarter tomorrow. Like they're gonna throw it. So, uh, but I expect those guys to play. I expect them to pick up blitzes when they come uh, to catch the ball out of the backfield. And I, I still think Ty Davis Price is going to be a big factor in this offense by the time the season ends. And that, I'm glad you brought up the pass protection and whatnot because I think that is the big factor in whether or not they would have played earlier, things like that. I don't I don't think they were where yeah. they needed to be in some of those that area, some of the mental areas. I don't know how fluid they are sometimes catching the ball and those are those are things that very much matter in this offense so I don't think it was ever about either of their ability it was about just whether or not you can trust them and you can trust Clyde Edwards Hilaire I do agree with you I do think Davis Price is gonna have a, a big role going forward I think Emery will probably be the better player for his three-year career but I think Davis Price might be a little more effective do you right think now. Davis Price is a bit of 1a right now and then Emery's a bit of 1b I don't know if I'm even ready to go that far. Okay. I, I don't have a great sense on that. I don't know about Hunt. Um, what about uh, trying to find a pass rush? And, and as we said uh, in, in segment one, me and Brody have talked about it a lot, but like, so you can't rush a guy that gets rid of the ball in two seconds. So there's going to be plays where you're just not going to be able to get to him. But what do you think? Do you, do you think LSU uh, tries to manufacture one? Are they going to start adding guys to the rush? Do they stick with four? Where, 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 how do you all expect them to kind I of I think play if out? you want to create a pass rush against this offense, you're going to have to your corners are going to have to play press and get all over those guys and disrupt timing of those quick throws. And if, yeah. if he doesn't have anywhere to throw it, then he's got to hold it, and then you can go get him. I think they've they've played a lot of of they've showed a lot of cushion in a lot of games this year. I kind of understand that against maybe Texas, but against Utah State. Let your star corners go out there and play and see if you're, you're, you can't get a pass rush that way. Yeah, when you hear them talk, it's almost like they've been um, – they know they can play man, and it's almost like they've been wanting to play zone to prove that when they have to, they can, and they just kind of continually struggle in zone. So because this kind of has a dress rehearsal sort of feel, I, I, I wonder if they go straight man just to shut Utah State down or if they try to prove that they – or if they try to prove they improved on that zone defense during the bye week. I'd like to just see them dominate any way they can. Yeah, and This defense needs to feel like it can be a dominant unit. And if the best way to stop Utah State is to play man press, bump and run, and blitz, then go do it. I just I, I also love what that would do for Flot, right? Because yeah. he would be he would be thrown into the deep end, tested right away. Um, I mean, come on. If, you, if you're Jordan Love and you're a good quarterback and you're reading the defense and you see Christian Fulton and you see Derek Stingley, like... Who are you going to throw <laughs> yeah. at? I mean, like, right? I mean, it's it's automatic. You are going to attack and test the true freshman. I mean, Flaw was a three star coming out of high school, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, this was not like he was. I believe the lowest rated of all the the five DB five corners they brought in. It's just so wild how guys develop at different rates and talent evaluation. How kind of spotty it can be that he goes from a three star. Now he was he was constantly bragged on during camp. Um, in the Texas game, he got some action, and they did attack him right away. Right he at was, him. He was right there. He was, was there. right there. It was, just, wasn't he, bad coverage or anything. Yeah. yeah, no, just just the ball skills maybe missing a bit. So I think they go right at him, and I'm interested to see how he holds up. Um, but the, the thing is, I've attack. seen LSU teams where if you made some mistakes in a game on defense, you were gonna have, you were gonna struggle to to make up for it on offense. They can make mistakes on defense in games like this. The uh, they are going to score 50 points tomorrow. Yeah. They're, they're going to score 50. Yeah. And Utah State isn't. And so if you make a mistake and they go for a 65-yard touchdown, yeah, it's not going to be pleasant, but it's not going to matter. So send them out there and let them play. So you you hit on something that I really love, and then that's really come to light just from watching a team with such a great offense, which you know we don't have a lot of experience doing, is that when you have the ability to be as threatening – and dynamic as LSU is, it allows you to overcome negative plays, both offensively and defensively. Like, there's a reason why people don't really remember any of the false starts or the holds or 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 the negative TFLs from this season. What's the signature play of the year? The third third and third and seven. Seven. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, Touché. thank you. Exactly. <laughs> well right? Exactly. Nobody remembers the sack on second down that looked like it had maybe lost you the game. Yeah. And so, like, for all the talk in the first segment of trying to say that we're, like, not celebrating this offense, nothing could be further from the truth. This offense is unreal. And and so that's where we're going next. What do you think, like, 
they knew when you watched Vandy on film, you knew they were terrible uh, in the secondary, <laughs> and and like LSU knew they were going to just feast. Like it was just a, it was like chum and waters for sharks, right? Uh, what what's Utah State bringing to bear? Are we expecting a similar level of domination? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Utah State can play with them at all, and I don't think it's going to help. This has been talked about all week, but I think it's real. Like, these DBs and these 300-pound defensive linemen, when it's 120 on the field and it's been 50 where they're from oh, all week. I mean, that, I, 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 I And they're, <laughs> they're running wind sprints trying to rush the passer and keep up with Jamar Chase and Justin. Like, it's going to be a disaster on their sideline in the third and fourth quarter. It, it, it's just they, they're, they're not gonna be able to hold up yeah i don't think I, I don't know i mean there's no way there's no way to prepare for it quite honestly um somebody in the huddle asked about radarius jones you think we uh see anything anything there i mean he might touch the field but i mean radarius jones is more of a project he's a little he's further off than the other guys i mean you'll see more jay ward than you'll see radarius jones what about um uh what, what about marcel brooks what what, what, do you, what do you what do you think his role is going forward on this defense well, I mean, they've firmly moved him back to outside linebacker now. I mean, obviously, they wanted him at first to be kind of that Jacoby Stevens, Grant Delpit role. Yeah. I think they realized that wasn't working, at least not as a freshman. So he's firmly back at outside linebacker. But now if you're going to put him there, now all of a sudden, he probably is, if, if Caleb on's back and whatnot, he's a he's a, probably going to see less playing time. Ray Thornton's suspended now, so maybe... You think because Ray Thornton was on the rush package. Do you yes. think maybe Marcel Brooks steps into the rush package and I mean, they support? love him. I, I don't know if he's there yet. I don't know if they can trust him yet. I know he had a lot to kind of learn mentally in some of these areas, mm. but, I mean, they do love him, so I wouldn't be surprised if you maybe experiment with him. Yeah, that reminds me of Jacoby Stevens. It reminds me yeah. of Russell yes, Shepard. It's like, we've got this guy, and we don't know what to do, and eventually... They find it, but it, it took yet. a while with Stevens last year, but they yeah. got there. And I think they learned their lesson from Stevens. I think they probably realized, like, oh, maybe we should stop playing around with them and just, yeah. like, all right, just make him an outside linebacker this year and go from there. Underrated play. Jacoby Stevens' pick last game. I mean, yeah. it was very athletic. It was great. And and I just love the fact that they forced those two turnovers. I know I kind of got lost in the second half haze that was Vanderbilt, where it just kind of everybody's just kind of lost it. But uh, I was writing my game story. Yeah, exactly right. That's one of those I'll be games honest with you guys. where you already have it written by like the the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter. But uh, hopefully they can build on that. The two turnovers, that's what I want to see out of this defense. Start making those. Because like really, if we are nitpicking, as we said, because it's a championship caliber team, that is one of the key areas where you could still see improvement would be turnover uh, turnover ratio, right? But think about it, man. Vandia gave up 14 points off of turnovers, and it didn't mean anything. Talk about the ability to overcome mistakes. You fumbled it into the end zone. You do a pick six, and you don't even admit, admit nothing. It meant nothing because these are the offensive glory days that we live in, boys. Hunt, before we let you go, prediction on the game? What do you think? Oh, 55, 21. Yeah. It's so just not so they cover the 27? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I they score so. so many points. I mean, I ridiculous. think so. I'm going to give it to you, man. Number one scoring offense in the nation. Go Tigers. It feels so good to say that. All right. All right. When we get back, we'll close out hour number one. Hunt, have a great call tomorrow. All right, guys. Thanks. Um, Thank you, Hunt. Excellent job. Thank you for coming in this morning. Come hang out. We'll be back more off the bench next. 104.5, 100.3, 94.7 ESPN.